By the end of the video, we're gonna have free running shellcode loader in C++. Since you guys like the idea, I'm starting offensive C++ series. I have created a GitHub repository and all of my code samples you see on the videos will be uploaded there. The repository is community based so feel free to add some code by yourself. Let's jump in and examine the theory behind today's code. Let's first talk about how to generate shellcode. Thankfully, you do not need to know assembly since there are tools like MSF Venom and Donut. In that case, I'm using MSF Venom. The payload I use is Stages Meterpreter because otherwise the payload's gonna be super huge. The host is my ETH0 interface, airport 443 and format obviously C because we want to use that. Output is being shellcut.c and if I cut that file, we can see the very same buffer variable which is in our code. So let's set up a quick listener here using MSF console and let's move back into the code. The very first lines of code represent what library you're gonna include in our code. In that case, we're going to include first Windows.h, meaning that we're going to use Windows APIs, and second IO stream representing basic C++ methods and functions. Let's take a moment to discuss more about Windows APIs since they are in main interest for us. Windows APIs are pretty much how Windows operate under the hood. There are multiple functions that are stored in various DLLs and when some action is being engaged, for instance, opening process, creating a new thread, or saving a file, a corresponding function is being used. In that example, when you save file with notepad, it uses the create file w function. The APIs we're gonna use are first show window, which pretty much decides whether the window should be visible or not. And by using get console window, we are getting the current console and by specifying SW height, we are saying that it's gonna be hidden. So when we execute something, it's not visible at all. The second API we're gonna use is called create file map in A. What it does is based on documentation, they said that it creates or opens a name to run named file mapping object for a specified file. If we dig down a little bit more, we can find that the file mapping is association of files contents with a portion of the virtual address space for process. That's something similar of what virtual alloc is doing, and that, it, that thing is allocating reserves and commits memory inside the virtual address space of the coding process. In a nutshell, we just create and ensure that there's memory inside the process that we can inject our shell code into. When we're talking about Windows APIs, it's always important to dig into the parameters, understand what they want, what's the return value, and what they return if it's been successful or not. In that case, if the function succeeds, we get a handle with a newly created file mapping. So we can check if the handle is no, we can perform some basic and, and further compilation checks, but so far, we know that works just nice. The parameters create file map in A is using are the following. First, we need a handle to a file. In our case, that's no, because we don't really use a file, but a shellcode there. Then we have AOP file mapping attributes, which are the attributes for the file. But as soon as we don't have a file, we are not really needing that. So that's why that's no. Then we're going to need the FL protect, meaning that the protection of the memory allocates in that virtual address space. That's super important and we're gonna dedicate more episodes especially on that. But I can say just now that these are the flags that the memory can perform actions based upon. Now in that case, we have page execute read write, meaning we can either read to the memory, write to the memory and execute from the memory, especially the execute we needed because we want overall to execute our shellcode. The next flag is zero, meaning that it's a DL maximum size high then we have DL maximum size row, which is size of the buffer. And let's dig down into these parameters more. Now, this thing is said that the higher order D word, and D word pretty much means inside 32 bit integer, with the maximum size of the file mapping object. And then we have the low order D word of the maximum size of the file mapping object. And it is stated that if this parameter and DL maximum size high are zero, the maximum size of the file mapping object is equal to the current size of the file that each file identifies. An attempt to map a file with an end of zero fails with an error code, something error file invalid. Application should test for files and length of zero and reject those files. Now in that case, we don't really use files and that's why this one is zero. Then we have the last one, which again is no in our case, and that is LPSC str which in a nutshell means long pointer for a constant string that's how you can define this it's an lp long pointer constant and str is string which is the file name most likely which is our case again is no and 
the name of the file mapping object so we don't really need that the next api we're going to use is mainly based in working and mapping to files in memory but we can use it to executing and writing our shellcode into memory now the map view file windows api is used to map a view of file into the other space of the coding process this creates a memory mapped file which can be accessed directly by the process if it was a regular memory buffer when the file is mapped in memory the system creates a mapping between the file and the block of memory in the process address space the memory can then be read from or written to and changes made to the memory are automatically written back to the file on the disk meaning that there's a special link between the file and that portion of the memory from the process virtual address space in this case i believe the parameters are more simple to understand first we need the handle to the file mapping object so in that case we pass the mem handle which we generate from the previous syntax then we need the desired access this is again huge since it describes what access we should have into the dedicated space in that case we're going to use file map all access and file map execute obviously and all the access parameter are being here there we have the all access and there we have the execute of course we have more but this is just fine for now then we have the hexadecimal representations of 0 here and 0 there, which are again the same parameters for DL file of set high and low. And the last part is how much bytes it needs to map, and in that case it's size of buff. Now I need to take a little bit of a, of a side note here and say that size of is actually counting bytes, and if you want to get the actual elements of an array, you need to use count of. So just to keep in mind. Now we have two more steps to go. The first one is being mem copy, which by definition is copying something into a memory space. Now it uses the standard namespace and either we can include using namespace std or you can point it like that. Now that's not Windows APIs, otherwise we can use its alternative which can be a Windows API, but that's a specific built-in function in C and C++. What it does, and as I said, it just copies something into the memory. In that case, we have copied the buffer, we have copied that many bytes into the memory map we just created here. Now we are at the final part. So far, what we did is to first hide the window so the user does not see anything, then we create a handle and create file mapping, then we use map view file to dedicate that address space, and then use mem copy to copy our buffer into the memory map we just created. Now the last syntax, even though it looks intimidated, what it does, it creates a pointer and it makes that segment of the memory we just created and copied the buffer into to be treated as a function. How it does that is by creating a pointer and navigating it to the beginning of the stack. In that case, it's just uh, something that you can just remember or use some kind of notes, but that's how it is. And what it does, it uses that to execute the buffer which is in the array. So I guess we should test that. I'm going to compile using release and x64 platform. I'm going to move into my cavi, specify my password, set up my listener once again, and just execute the file. I'm here, execute the shellcode. Come on. And we have a session. What we're going to do now after each developed payload is to scan it using anti-scan me to various antivirus solutions. So in that case, I have my pre-compiled thing there. I'm going to remove that to be SR because show code is way too obvious. Now I'm going to copy the path, then click browse, browse to the path, and there we are. Upload that and let's see how many of the AVs are catching that. In that case, it's, it's only nine. Now, of course, we can do a lot more into evade and word that detection rate, but I can say that based on raw shell code, non encrypted what one from MSF Venom, I think that's a pretty good result. With that being said, thank you everyone for watching and don't forget to subscribe.